uh, proportionality. There is such a concept as proportionality, but the way the secular world understands it is so childish and so immature that it's dangerous. Proportionality doesn't mean if you kill 10, I kill 10. If you kill 100, I kill 100. That is so immature. That's like kids playing in the schoolyard. Hey, it's not fair. You got three points. I got two. Proportionality means this. I don't do more damage than is necessary to bring peace. Which means very simply, if by killing one person, I have peace, then I'm not allowed to kill two. Makes a lot of sense. If I, if by killing three people, I bring peace, then I'm not allowed to kill four. So the proportional is not proportionate to what I did. It's proportional to what it takes to bring peace. Don't do more than is necessary for peace. And in many cases in wars, they are, the, the, the victor already had a victory. It was done, but they wouldn't stop killing just because they could. So proportionality means once you have enough to have peace, then you don't kill any more, not one more. Which leads me to one thing that you said in one of your uh, videos, I think uh, last week or last two weeks, the most moral way is regarding war is to end it as soon as possible. Okay, so I think it resonates with what you just said. You can you do the what you need to do in order to stop the war as soon as possible because war is a terrible, messy thing, and you don't do more than what you need to do. So it's both the proportional, these two aspects of the proportional. Right, but if you do less, see. According to modern thinking or silly thinking, if I've already killed 12,000 people, I, I'm just going to quit. I can't do anymore. I can't. 12,000, it's so much. I can't do anymore. So we're going to stop. That is immoral. It's horrible because you didn't bring peace and yet you killed 12,000 people for nothing. If it doesn't bring peace, then the, all of those deaths are in vain. That's, that's horrendous. Especially if by killing another thousand, you would bring peace. So because you don't want to kill 13,000, 12,000 is your limit. So you just wasted 12,000 lives. Worse than that. Since you didn't bring peace, five years from now, there'll be another war and more people will get killed. So to not achieve peace, even though you're fighting a war, it is the, the, the most immoral thing you can possibly do. Every time you accept a ceasefire, but there is no peace, people died for nothing, and there's going to be more because within 10 years there'll be another war what is peace peace means the enemy would not think of starting up again for at least 40 years 40 years people forget a whole new generation grows up 40 years later it's the grandchildren of the people you defeated. So maybe they don't remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, there's a reason. Now, yes. one other thing. If your values dictate that you don't kill children, should you tell the enemy that, that are your, those are your values? 
Should you tell your enemy, I will not kill your children? It is so immoral. Look at what you're doing. What you're you doing, promised. as we saw, I'm sorry to interrupt, it's just what you're doing, as we saw, is you're compelling your enemy or you're suggesting to your enemy to put all the babies yes. in the front line and to hide underneath hospitals, as we saw that they themselves confessed that their headquarters are always underneath hospitals, kindergartens, uh, clinics of all kinds. This yes. is... This is because they know we have these quote unquote moral values, which are really horrible, as we saw. So even if you're not going to kill children, you don't make a statement like that to your enemy. Why? Because then you're encouraging them to use children as shields. You're endangering their children, not protecting them. And the proof is, when one Muslim state goes to war against another Muslim state, do they use civilians as, as they don't no. put the civilians in front? No. Only when Israel attacks, because they know that we have a weakness. This is a great, a great point, truly great point. So we complain and complain. Well, they use human shields. They put babies in the front. It's their fault. Of course, it's their fault. But who gave them that idea? Who's encouraging them? But Every I just want I, I, I just want to add that even if we weren't to tell them in advance, they would have figured it out themselves. They would see that we do everything in our power to prevent the deaths of children, civilians of all kinds. We do all we can. For, we've been doing this for, I don't know, 75 years, and it hasn't helped even more. No. I mean, th there's this notion that the war began in 48, which is completely wrong. They slaughtered us, children and women and elderly, in the beginning of the 1900s, way before the, the, the establishment of the Jewish state. Now, I have, I have a question. Um, I have this idea that People see this as a war between religions, and I think this is completely uh, wrong. I think that if it is the case that this is a war of religion, it is completely one-sided. They do this. They want to kill us. Not just, We always knew they wanted to kill us. We always knew we, they wanted us dead. But what we've realized, to our great dismay, and we don't even have the mental capacity, the, the, the emotional tools to grasp this, they want to do, their highest achievement is to slaughter us with their bare hands and to do horrible things to, to, it's just, I can't even describe it without crying. It's just too much. This is the horrible realization. So this is not, a religious war. This is one-sided. And I also have a question about how Judaism is not really a religion, but could you please just uh, say something about this point, that this and, is one-sided? And the idea is, and I think it's very important, that the victims were people in the kibbutzim, which yeah. were... Their best friends, besides their the allies. far radical left, very, very secular. People very secular. where the Jewish identity was did not much, exist. was much much weaker than the did Israeli identity okay and I think that for the first time in the for I, I don't know if the existence of the state of Israel but in the first time for like in the 40 years people in the secular modern world say ha huh, this is because I'm a Jew we get we we feel we we have the same feeling from the stories of the Holocaust it is just because you were Jewish. So we have the one-sided religious war. Please comment on this. And then the fact that being a Jew isn't really practicing anything. It's just, it's something different. It's not really it's, a religion. It's who you are. It's not what you it's believe in or what you do. Yes, okay. So let me, suggest, let me suggest something. Wouldn't it be nice if we can talk about this for an hour and a half and never mention the name of our enemies? They get too much publicity already. 
and to talk about they're so bad, they're so vile, they're so I don't I why why are they getting all the attention? Which is exactly what they want. They're not important. They just have to be killed. They're not important. So to keep saying, hey, they're so, so bad. Yeah, we all know, and they're not the exception. That's an important thing we need to talk about. To think that there is one group who are crazy, they're, they're barbarians, they have, they have no decency. One group are the students who are marching in favor of... Exactly. In Harvard University, in yeah. all Ivy League universities in the U.S. So really what we're seeing is not that there is a terrible group of people in Gaza. Don't make them sound like they're special in their evil. They're not. When the Babylonians destroyed the first Bet HaMikdash, you know what they did to our babies? I don't want to know. Yeah. And when the Romans came and defeated the Babylonians, you know what the Romans did to the Babylonian babies? But that was so long ago. We would think that after... <laughs> and we, we didn't would, have it on social media. We didn't have it on camera. Yeah. But now we get so, to see all these atro atrocities on camera. It's just, it's too much. It's you don't want you don't want to talk about them, and I understand what you're saying, but I just said that I, it, it, they're not the anyone anyone who is marching, anyone who is allowing the marches to to occur, one day, two days, three days after this horrific incident, they are all all compliant to this. They all agreed that this was a great idea. Every one of them, it's million, hundreds of millions of people agree that this is a wonderful idea. So what went wrong? Nothing went wrong. Nothing changed. This has been the way human beings behave since the beginning of history, and we haven't really made any changes. So here's, here's the question that we need to be looking at. Of course, we're going to destroy the enemy. Of, what's the question? Hopefully, without accepting a ceasefire like we always did. So, yeah, we'll destroy them. And then, what's going to be with the rest of the world? We've now discovered not that we have an enemy in Gaza. We always knew that. We just discovered that the world is just as barbaric as it was 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. So the big question is, is there a solution to this? Does nothing help us become more human? In all these years, we did nothing to become more humane? Well, there were two things we were hoping. Two hopes. One is that religion will, will teach you not to murder and not to uh, commit adultery and not to worship idols. Morality would come from religion. The other hope was, a secular hope, that morality will come from education. If you're educated, if you read books, if you study philosophy, if you are scientific, classical, you a, music. classical music, then you'll become a mensch. Those were the two hopes. Now, let's see who is the most excited and the most fervent supporters of the enemy. College students, and religious people. In other words, the most corrupt are the religious who twist their religion and, and, and educated people, campuses. That's a pretty scary thing, huh? The two places from which we thought morality would come turn out to be 
the most immoral. So the question then becomes, is there ever going to be morality? If religion doesn't make you moral, and if education doesn't make you moral, what's left? And can I rephrase it differently? Does a moral progress possible? Is moral progress. Is moral progress possible? Because it seems only it seems that you know that the that after the slavery in the US, the Americans became more moral. It seems that after uh, I don't know all the horrors of the Holocaust, the Germans somehow became more moral. Can I take what you just said and say, you know, I think the conclusion is that moral progress is just impossible. And this is a very dangerous idea, I think. But maybe the answer lies in between that Judaism is not a religion and the seven laws of Noah, the Noahide laws, are not a religion. And it's not if you do this and this, then you go to heaven. If you don't, you go to hell. Something else. It's uh, a moral code. It's something to live by. It's looking at the one true God and by that redeeming your evil tendencies, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so we'll get to what the solution is. First, let's, let's appreciate what the problem is. We're too focused on a certain group or two groups or three groups. Who is evil in the world? Iran. And that's it? How many well, support? How many, how many supporters does Iran have? There are the vocal ones that we know about, and there are all the silent ones that we don't hear about. How much of the world is really anti-Iran uh, nuclear power? It's scary to even think about it. So if religion is not the solution and education is not the solution, how is it that there are much more good people in the world today than there were a hundred years ago? Yeah, much it more. Like, it seems like we, we have made a progress. So seeing all these people marching down the streets with these flags, these flags of blood and, and, and evil, it's just... Yeah. So it turns out that they are a minority, a tiny minority. The good people? No, 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 the bad people. Ah. According to some poll, 87% of all Americans are siding with Israel and they believe Israel should do whatever it takes. So where is all the noise coming from? 87% think it's great. Tiny minority. Mostly the educated, the professors, and the college students. And the people who are paid to protest. Most of them are professional protesters. They don't even know what they're protesting. That's the good news. The bad news is these people, the 87% who know right from wrong, are not influenced by their religion or by their education. That's why they're moral. Common sense? Common decency. People would be more moral if they weren't corrupted by the religion and by the education. There is so much to do to make the world better. But if you had to pick one to start with, tzedakah. Tzedakah, the Hebrew word for charity. Get one of these boxes for your home, for your office, for your car. And at every occasion, put in a few coins, making charity and giving a daily habit. It's incredible. The blessings that it brings, the success that it brings, and the help that it offers to people who need. Kolel Chabad. That's my charity of choice. Kolel Chabad, C-O-L-E-L, -E Chabad. Look it up. 
get yourself a box and let's get the world better.